fans welcome back to another review of a kamiga kill this week we get two chapters chapter 58 kill the skilled and chapter 59 kill your assumption now the wait for these chapters was painful but you know what the wait was definitely worth it these chapters was pure bliss i loved it i was so surprised with the amount of action and content we got i mean to be fair all the chapters have been great but this one was just brilliant especially because 59 was kind of banged on right after it because it was only about 29 pages so it felt like it was more or less just part of chapter 58 and it do it definitely feels like it's starting to wind down to you know the end of the series and i felt like this was particularly um at the beginning of chapter 58 where we have um tatsumi and akame um to consider i think was it the revolutionary army about their plan to kill Estef with Murasame and this led me to believe thinking well you know Estef is the final villain this is something kind of very important um, so I can only imagine there's not really much more fights to go um, through especially after um, the fights we had today um, the only thing I'm wondering about that now will it be similar to the anime will it be Akami versus Estef that's something I'm kind of curious to see Hopefully it doesn't follow the anime and it does its own thing because we already got it um, kind of spoiled with, you know, Budo versus mine. So hopefully this is something different. But Cosmina, Cosmina, I think that's how you pronounce it, finally get to see her destructive um, power in basically in play. And it's filthy. It's pretty much like an ultra um, danger beast. And her strength is immense. And the funny thing is, it's like, I was kind of reminded of Attack on Titan when she was just devouring the revolutionary army troops and funny enough um, I thought she was going to be just let loose to go rampant on her own but these were kind of planned attacks um, with, alongside Dorothy and um, Izu and they basically attacked, um, made three attacks on three separate encampments and it's like they were trying to either windle down the um, revolutionary army's strength or they're just generally feeding Kazmina so Cosmina, so I'm assuming it was probably a bit of both. Um, funny enough, is Cosmina is still sentient and she still retains some of her memories um, before she was transformed, as um, Izu um, mentioned, because he said that she doesn't seem to resent or attack us, and apparently her fondness and um, feelings for her comrades are still there. So that was kind of interesting to see, and we even see her saying, So hungry, so hungry, quite a few times. Um, one part of this chapter was kind of hilarious was Suzuka. She is still a sadomasochist even after being, you know, kind of knocked out brutally by Esther. And we've seen before she fantasized about being tortured by Esther, along with also um, um, expressing some interest in Tatsumi after she lost to him and then later tried to violate him. And now we see um, this chapter is no different where she pretty much had you might as well say borderline orgasm remembering Tatsumi's face at the time in the prison when she was going to violate him and um, this was obviously before Esteb knocked her out and she's just talking about how it's so exotic um, exhilarating and um, yeah you might as well say orgasmic to her so that was quite hilarious but she did bring up an interesting point to Dorothy not to underestimate Tatsumi because he has limited um, growth um, for his potential so that's hinting on obviously him either maybe he'll power up again or it's just showcasing that he's now a dangerous threat to be aware of so um later on dorothy izu and cosmina are about to start a fourth attack on encampment but um lucky for that encampment um it's it basically attack is interrupted by akame who was quick to learn their movements after only three previous assaults and um an interesting item comes into play is the philosopher's stone and during obviously when Akame interrupted um, you know the attack she slashed Cosmo and the effects of the Murasame looked like it had gone over and killed her but the Philosopher's Stone actually negated this um, negates the effects of the instant death and it completely it's like it shattered and then gave um, Cosmo like a second life or something so it's like it took the brunt of all Murasame's you know instant death um, curse and just shattered and Cosmo was fine so um after this we have this um fights basically split up to three akame takes on izu 
Tatsumi, knowing he only has four more uses of um, Incusio, activates it and fights Cosmo, and that leaves um, Leone to fight Dorothy. So, to put it short, Akame's fight definitely was the highlight of the chapter, and she is once again proving she's a complete beast. Um, Izu is no weak warrior at all, and he's very cunning and I'd say perceptive nature as a warrior is always been very you know apparent from what we've seen and we even see a part where um, he has like a future vision of Akame's moves and he, in his vision he sees through all her moves and cleaves her in two um, completely brufocates her but this doesn't really help him at all his foresight fails to um, basically get the advantage of Akame she easily surpasses any of his basically his future sight and she it's like she completely went straight past him and cut him down from behind and he was in complete hysterics he's like i can't believe you just did this to me um and funny enough um i forgot another thing i forgot to mention izu mentions that ko um ko setsu um wants to drink more night raid blood so i'm assuming he was referring to um lubbock and i kind of see on akame's face when it kind of widened and then hardened that she knew he was talking about lubbock most likely taunting and that just made her obviously bloodlust and anger towards izu that more apparent so yeah she was ruthless right towards the end she cut izu down in one hit and even refused his last request as a swordsman she he requested her to take ko's suit say. Um, saying that someone as skilled as her would be able to um, you know satisfy the sword's blood loss but she completely refuses him slice him in, in his back while he's on the ground and um, it disregards him and he's completely shocked like how could you betray the last request of a fellow k katana user and she coldly refers back to him I was never a swordsman it's like go screw yourself you killed you know one of my friends that's the way I see it and, and, and right to as well so um yeah after that pretty much after she's finished her battle straight away she's um attacked by those group of i can't remember if they were danger beast clones or i, I think they were just experiments um that dorothy made the same ones that rampage through the imperial capital recently they basically confront akami and that's the end of that chapter so um i might as well go straight into the next one um chapter 59 starts off with dorothy um facing off leone and she shows that she's not a simple, simple alchemist, you know, just a wizard in the lab, excuse me. And she actually has the most strength of all Wild Hunt and she easily subdues Leone. Like in one hit, she's like, she just grabs um, Leone's fist when she when Leone tries to punch her, slams onto the ground and that's it. But as I said, Akame once again took the chapter, um, the limelight of this chapter. Jesus Christ, Leone's words um, explain her very well. Even without an imperial arms, the karma is lethal, and she demonstrates that very well in this chapter. Despite Dor um, Dorothy creating these troops, she had a very carefully orchestrated plan to kill Akami. She still proves that that doesn't matter; she's lethal, and the plan was actually very good because they um, basically all attacked at once, and then Akami easily kills one of them. But in fact, that was a sacrificial pawn to trap Mirasami in place because it was like some kind of sludge or goo that she couldn't pull out. So that basically disarmed her and she was forced to let go. And then they, the remaining troops, moved into a position that would prevent a false, um, easy sense of security for her to see a path back to reclaim Mirasami. But she was too smart for that her perceptiveness and obviously cunningness as a warrior saw through that this was just a trap because if she rushed towards that that would be her death so instead of taking you know um the false you say path to go and reclaim murasami she instead takes um decides to go bare knuckle on them and fight and she takes out the first one with a solid punch to the face and then it's like gets on top of his neck and cracks like snaps his neck neck with her legs and I was like bloody hell then what happened after that was complete um, a massacre she grabbed his sword and then easily finished the rest of them off there was so many limbs um, cut up it was I said it was it, you can ex understand why she helps out in the kitchen because her culinary skills were on point she was slicing them up easily it was ridiculous and 
funny enough, it was like Dorothy was in complete shock. She didn't know what to say. She was absolutely astounded. And funny enough, um, Akame says, oh, you know, I know there's more hiding underground. And it's like, I'll be ready to bury the rest of them. They're just waiting to attack me. And um, this is when Leone attacks, saying, so have I. I've been waiting for this chance. And um, basically, she had the perfect opening to attack Dorothy after having enough time to um, heal and recover. So that basically um, is round two for them. And chapter starts um, stops there. So as I said, Akame, brilliant. Love that girl. She is a beast with or without Murasami. Her two battles were beyond epic. Um, so as I said, I'm pleased with that. Um, Izu is gone, that's another, um, I, can't, I can't even remember, yeah he was Wild Hunt, that's right, he's Wild Hunt because I keep thinking he was one of the demon, four demon things, he's Wild Hunt, that's another one gone, so um, Cosmio and Dorothy I think are the only ones left now, so basically I'm assuming after they're finished off it will most likely lead towards fighting um, either the Emperor, the Prime Minister guy, and then Estef or something like that. So as I said, there's not much left to do, but this chapter was very entertaining. Um, obviously, next time we're going to most likely have Leone fight Dorothy, and then the final one could be um, Cosmia against um, um, Tatsumi. So as I said, yeah, very much looking forward to that. This chapter was brilliant. Um, I never say it enough, but the artwork is always on point. It's one of those series where you're always satisfied with each panel and all the artwork even the color panels at the front um, were brilliantly drawn out and as I said action the as I said sly um, little one-liners were all brilliant and we had even a little bit of comedy in there with Suzuka so as I said one last time brilliant chapter and I can't wait for the next one hopefully we're not as delayed as we um, had with these ones but as I said um, I'm grateful for the translators always translating this for us. It's free and you know, I'm looking forward to the next one So that's enough rambling for me. You heard what I've had to say. I enjoyed these two chapters very much But I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comment box below and I'll speak to you guys next time. Take care